Hello, hey, my name is Jason Shepard and with me is Roman Chaposhnik and we're here to talk to you about uh, building the Android for the IoT Edge related to Project Eve within LF Edge. So, um, hey everyone. All right, so that's us. Um, you can find us online, you know, there and uh, both of us work uh, with a company called Zadita and we leverage uh, Eve as part of our commercial offer. So, you know, what is Eve? You know, Rome is going to talk in a lot more detail about uh, Eve as a foundation for uh, IoT Edge applications, but you know, think of it as a universal abstraction layer for um, Edge hardware, and, and it's really focused on hardware outside of a, a secure data center. So it could be a gateway, it could be a server on a factory floor, but just anything out you know, in the wild that you need to make sure is very secure. Uh, you want to abstract all that complexity from the hardware and, and make it much more easy for developers to, to deploy uh, applications, orchestrate those applications remotely. Uh, completely open, obviously, it's part of Linux Foundation, and, and ultimately it's about providing these open APIs that enable you to uh, take advantage of that abstraction and, and uh, prevent lock-in for any, any particular uh, application stack, hardware, et cetera. So that's kind of even a nutshell, and we'll get into more details, but just to make sure it's clear where we play, so uh, recommend you check out the LF Edge uh, taxonomy paper that came out earlier this summer. You can find that online. Lots and lots of detail, won't go through all the detail here, but you know, think of uh, Eve as being the, uh, serving the IoT component of the smart device edge as covered in that paper. So this means anything outside of a, a secure data center, uh, out distributed out in the field, uh, but still capable of running apps. You know, if you go one step further left, now you're you're highly constrained in terms of a device. You know, it's more embedded software, very custom tools for everything. But once you have enough memory to abstract uh, that that bare metal foundation for virtualization and containers, there's a lot more that you can do, and it simplifies a lot of that complexity. And so, um, you know, Eve is focused on that. Lots of great tools for the data center, but um, really a challenge when you get outside of a physically secure data center. You know, lots and lots of di different diversity, many types of uh, you know x86 hardware, ARM hardware, a lot of legacy stuff out there. Uh, all kinds of different um, things to deal with, uh, scale factors. So when you're in the uh, uh, the cloud, you know, talk about the public cloud, there's tens of public clouds that really matter. When you get to the device edge, especially the constrained devices, there'll eventually be trillions of devices out there. Um, and now the the IoT edge where compute's happening, you know, it's somewhere in between, but just massive scale over time that you have to comprehend. And it's just different than what's in the data center. And the other big thing is when you're not in the data center, not only do you not have physical security all the time, but also you don't necessarily have a network perimeter. You know, you don't necessarily know that there's a firewall or have control over that. So you need a solution that, that's built to be out you know, in the wild, uh, built to, to be secure regardless of um, how you deploy it. And so that's a big uh, enablement that Eve is looking to go do. And if you really look at it, you know, the smart device edge includes uh, mobile devices, client devices, a very well solved problem. Um, you know, with Windows and iOS and Android, uh, the the IoT compute edge is also part of that, as defined in the taxonomy, and that's that's the Wild West right now. And so think of Eve doing for the IoT component of the smart device edge what Android did for the mobile component. Component, you create a universal foundation, make it super easy to deploy apps. You can build an ecosystem on top, but uh, uh, way more way more easier than by basically death by a thousand cuts, hacking away at you know all this different kind of hardware and whatnot. So, you know, very uh, very uh, important you know, part of we think of, of scaling embedded computing to meet the needs of you know, IoT and Edge. And so, just you know, real quick on kind of the philosophy behind Eve in terms of architectural approach. So there's a variety of different ways of doing it. Um, you know, Roman will describe a little bit more, but you know, Eve is a bare metal abstraction layer. So you sit right on top of the hardware. Uh, you know, we support both virtual machines and containerized workloads. So that's important when you're in, in a legacy uh, world where you've got, say, some Windows applications that you want to put next to modernized um, you know, cloud native apps. So uh, very much focused on more constrained hardware. You know, still has enough memory to support the abstraction, but but uh, a lot more constrained than a rack of servers that you would see in a data center. Uh, completely uh, uh, open API in terms of how you build um, uh, a, a interface into Eve. So you're not gonna get locked in any particular interface. So that's that's uh, you know at a foundational foundational level like what Eve's about, and of course the other big things since you're bare metal is you're not necessarily going to brick that device or you won't break that device out in the field uh, compared to some other ways of doing it. 
when you're looking at the alternatives today, there is a, a number of proprietary bare metal solutions. You can get some similar benefits because you've got that lower level hardware access, but you will be locked in to only the controller that's supported with that uh, abstraction layer. Um, the other big thing you know, with those solutions is you know, all of the solutions that we see today are really focused at the data center uh, class equipment, not stuff that's distributed out in the wild that's more constrained. Um, so that's, that's one uh, option we see out there. And the other option we see often is where you take an OS, you put an agent on top and that talks with the controller. But the problem with that is if you don't do a lot of integration between the agent and the OS, you're very likely gonna break that device out in the field. Uh, if you don't do hardening of the OS, you're gonna have security issues. So the whole point is if you integrate the agent with the OS, well, you've just built Eve. So the idea is, hey, just use Eve and let's go build a community around that. And, and again, kind of do that Android thing for the IoT Edge and make it just a lot easier to, to scale long-term. So uh, you know, real quick before I hand it over to, to, um, to Roman is, is, is kind of give you an example. So one of the patterns that we see all the time, people have legacy applications, they need to be able to uh, support those. You can't just get rid of existing investments. You wanna run some new containerized applications on the same hardware. So you know, imagine a gateway or a server deployed, you know, it could be in a retail store, it could be on a, a, in an office space, you know, uh, even a factory floor doing uh, video surveillance. You know, obviously we're moving more and more to computer vision and whatnot, but classic video surveillance use case, most video surveillance applications, VMSs, are Windows-based today. Uh, very often today, what happens is someone goes and deploys a box, they put it in a closet, they start it running, it's recording, and then they leave, you know, as a technician, they leave, and then they never see it again. And so uh, Eve can provide a lot of visibility into that, um, that foundation, but also help you run more modernized workloads next to it in terms of containers. So maybe you want to put a, uh, an AI model next to that uh, foundation for um, uh, object detection. It could be a licensed place, could be people, et cetera, um, uh, various different things. And then send that data, it could be on-prem into the cloud. Maybe you're going to put something like Azure IoT Edge next to it. Maybe you're using some sort of pro protocol conversion uh, um, uh, service you're know, running in there. You can assign to different cores and, and uh, co-processing elements. So it's, it's really about how do I provide that hardware abstraction? How do I make it very, very easy to deploy uh, and, or and orchestrate hardware? Uh, and software, uh, any device, any application, um, you know, any cloud, any on-prem system. So you know, Eve is that becomes that universal abstraction layer. So with that, I'll hand it off to Roman to provide a little more detail on, on the project and where we're headed. Absolutely. Thank you, Jason, for a wonderful introduction. So hopefully we got everybody's attention and sort of interest in digging a little bit deeper into Eve. And let me just again reiterate what Eve is. Uh, so conceptually, it's basically an operating system-like, uh, you know, uh, uh, offering. So the closest analogy in the existing space would be, uh, if you're familiar with VMware, uh, it would be something like ESX or ESXi, you know, from VMware. It's basically something that you deploy on an edge node, right? You know, could be a small computer, could be, you know, as small actually as Raspberry Pi. I will talk about Raspberry Pis a little bit later, but, you know, typically it's a computer uh, the size of the Intel's NUC, uh, you know, that's attached to some kind of an equipment or basically does, you know, uh, data acquisition and processing. And Eve just gets deployed uh, as an operating system. So it boots. And once it boots, uh, it has all of these different services uh, that you can see on this slide, essentially being in support of running uh, virtual machines and containers. And those become user applications, right? So we'll get into all of these different services, uh, but you can see that, you know, at the end of the day, Eve is that, uh, you know, appliance almost operating system, right? Uh, that doesn't really require any kind of management uh, because all of the management is built right into it. So if you look into the key, capability, key capabilities that Eve actually provides to the application layer, uh, we spend a great deal on making sure that the trust and security becomes as easy as possible uh, because all of these, you know, small devices nowadays have actually a pretty decent uh, root of trust infrastructure, you know, typically expressed as a TPM, you know, on Intel or T or, you know, similar infrastructure on ARM. Uh, but using it, you know, from your application becomes a challenge a lot of times, right? Uh, so Eve, uh, takes care of that on its own side and then presents a virtualized view into that security infrastructure back to the application. Uh, 
so obviously, uh, we, you know, are pretty efficient in terms of how we uh, manage resources like CPU, memory, you know, device ports. Uh, but on the device ports, we also provide an additional level of security, uh, making sure that you can actually remotely turn on and off, you know, things like USB ports, for example so that you cut down on the attack vectors uh, in your infrastructure, or you can assign individual USB ports you know, to individual applications. Uh, so let's say a container that actually needs to get some data out of a machine gets a USB port assigned, but not, none of the other containers running on it will get you know, anything. Uh, we support you know, some level of uh, what you would describe as you know, serverless uh, infrastructure. Uh, so we have this uh, way of running tiny VMs called unikernels, uh, and you can actually build a VM, a uh, full-fledged VM, to be as small as one megabyte, which is actually a pretty decent, you know, size. Uh, again, CPU assignment is obviously a given for any kind of virtualization system, uh, but we're also taking care of GPU assignments, uh, which becomes uh, a use case a lot of times for uh, AI applications on the edge. Uh, and especially applications that tend to do a lot of uh, acceleration, you know, on the GPU. Uh, and finally, when it comes to patching, you know, security updates, all of that is built right into Eve itself. Uh, just like Android, you know, we use this uh, uh, blue-green partition uh, so that you never really uh, are in danger of breaking your device, even if you update Eve itself. But obviously, updating an application uh, running on Eve is as easy as just deploying a new version of the application and you know killing the old one, right? So it's a very cloud-native way of looking at your application deployment. And at the end of the day, that's what Eve is trying to do. So Eve is basically trying to turn all of your uh, edge infrastructure into something that looks like yet another cloud. Um, so we actually had a few things, you know, for our project roadmap for 2020. And we kind of actually got quite a few of them done, but there's still, you know, a few uh, outstanding. So I'll just call out the ones that, you know, are pretty interesting and you can actually play with them already. Um, so one of them was integrating KVM and Acorn hypervisors into EVE. EVE uh, began uh, as a technology based on Xen hypervisor, uh, but from the beginning, we actually wanted it to be hypervisor agnostic. And to keep us honest, obviously we integrated KVM, you know, pretty quickly. Uh, but the fact that Intel has donated, you know, Acorn, uh, a hypervisor that's specifically aimed at uh, industrial and real-time use to Linux Foundation accelerated our integration with Acorn. And Intel team actually did all the work, uh, which is a great, you know, news for us because, you know, as any open source project, we're always looking for community members to contribute. Uh, so that's pretty interesting and you can play with it already. Uh, we actually added, uh, uh, you know, we shrunk EVE runtime quite a bit. So right now we can, you know, fit into 256 megabytes uh, of RAM and about, you know, the same size of the flash. Uh, honestly, you know, to be absolutely comfortable, we probably need, you know, 512, but you can actually start playing with EVE uh, even in that small footprint. Uh, just a quick, you know, summary on the internal composition of EVE, right? Uh, so any kind of workload uh, or any kind of resource that you need to be expressed as a user resource on Eve basically gets expressed in a similar manner to Kubernetes CRDs. And, you know, for those of you familiar with Kubernetes, CRDs uh, stand for custom resource definitions. So basically anything that runs on Eve will get a CRD-like definition. And in fact, we're actually working with the community to see maybe we can migrate to the CRD uh, uh, format itself. So then Eve basically becomes even more, uh, uh, even closer to the Kubernetes, you know, as we all know it today. But uh, what do those CRDs actually express? Well, fundamentally on Eve, you basically have uh, three kinds of resources, right? Uh, you have volumes, which basically signify storage. And those volumes could be just, you know, virtual machine volumes, like, you know, block disk, or they could be container or CI uh, volume, you know, which is uh, a file system, you know, POSIX file system like interface. Uh, we give you a pretty flexible way of managing them, but you know, that basically storage management. The second type of resource is network. Uh, so we actually abstract away all of the complexity of networks. So for example, you can basically say, I want a resource that is a network uh, that is connected to an Amazon uh, VPC with the following set of credentials. And if we'll just instantiate that network, and make it available uh, uh, on the system. 
And finally, once you have volumes and networks, uh, basically there has to be something that takes care of, you know, actually using them. And that something is a runnable entity and any runnable entity on Eve gets rep represented as a task. So tasks are basically uh, either containers or VMs or unikernels that essentially consume volumes and networks and do something useful, right? You know, they also obviously consume CPU and RAM, uh, but CPU and RAM are kind of table stakes, so, you know, I don't really call them out separately. So that's in a nutshell the whole composition of Eve. You know, that's how, kind of how you have to think about the system. Uh, so if you would uh, see a manifest of what gets deployed on Eve, that manifest look, would look very similar to a Kubernetes manifest or, you know, HashiCorp Terraform. Uh, so you would feel right at home if you're familiar with the typical DevOps, you know, tool, tool chain. Now, finally, you know, one exciting bit uh, is a full support of Raspberry Pi 4. You know, before uh, Raspberry Pi 4, Raspberry Pis were not really capable as, you know, computers in terms of virtualization uh, because they uh, were not implementing uh, gigs correctly. Uh, but with Raspberry Pi 4, we have a full fledged platform, you know, on ARM, you know, which is very exciting for us. Uh, so there was a lot of work done with the Zen community uh, between Zen and Eve to make it uh, uh, available, you know. But now you can basically check it out. You know, you can go to the Eve's project website and it's probably the easiest way to start playing with Eve, right? You know, to get yourself a, a Raspberry Pi board and just uh, uh, trying it out. Now, before you do that, you might actually want to give it a try on the uh, laptop and we allow for that as well. In fact, we actually have a, a brother or sister project, you know, uh, uh, to Eve called Eden, uh, which is essentially a Swiss Army knife for open source Eve management. So again, think of Eden, Eden as, you know, a bit of a HashiCorp-like tooling to essentially tie all of the different things that you need to have running to basically make a fleet of Eve devices useful. Uh, and today, Eden supports, you know, three different kinds of Eve. Uh, you know, you can run Eve locally on your laptop, which is I'm about to demo quickly. You can run Eve on your Raspberry Pi. You can Eve uh, run Eve as a virtualized instance on Google Cloud Compute. Uh, and the tooling of Eden basically mimics a popular uh, DevOps tool chain. So demo time. All right, so the first thing that you need to do once you download Eden from GitHub is to build it, uh, which we will use make to do, uh, make build. And Eden is written in Go, so I could have just easily used Go compiler, but it's just a little bit nicer to use make. But this is the last time we will be using make. Everything else is done through the Eden utility itself. So it comes with a lot of helpful commands. We will be exploring a few of them today. So the first command that you should know about is called Eden config. And Eden config is modeled after Kubernetes uh, context. So it's basically allowing you to manage different profiles or flavors of Eve. So let's start with adding the default uh, config. But before we do that, let's see what options are available. So as you can see, we have a Raspberry Pi option. We have a Google compute option. But today we will be using the easiest, the simplest one of all, which is running Eve directly on my laptop using QML. So this is the default config that we've just generated. And now let's set this config up. So there's a command called Eden setup, uh, which essentially uh, is downloading and generating all of the bits and pieces that you could easily download and generate manually yourself. Uh, but it's just a little bit nicer to use Eden and orchestrate uh, all of these different steps. So right now, for example, it creates certificates uh, to install into the Eve image. So when Eve comes up, you know, there's a, a mutual TLS that protects, you know, any kind of connection that it does. Uh, it also downloads a particular release of Eve. So right now it downloaded this release from Docker Hub uh, and it needs to unpack this release and basically turn it into an image uh, that has all those uh, certificates built in. Um, so it's done, it's not too bad, it's not running for too long, and besides, it's just one-time action. So now that we have everything set up correctly, let's start everything up. So there is a command called Eden uh, start, uh, which essentially is running a whole bunch of containers, and you can see which ones by just doing docker ps. Um, all of the Eden containers are prefixed with Eden, so it's pretty easy to see uh, what they are. Uh, but it also started the QML, so that's the Eve itself. And if you want to take a look at what Eden thinks about your system, you can always do Eden status. And it will basically show you that, you know, a lot of things are green. The only thing that is yellow is Eve is actually running, but it hasn't been registered with a controller. So Eve is not known to Eden just yet. Let's fix it by issuing Eden Eve on board command. 
And I will run it in the background because it takes a little bit of time. And the reason it takes a little bit of time is because Eve uh, follows an old Hollywood principle. You don't call us, we call you. In that sense, you cannot really establish an inbound connection into Eve. Uh, so for example, now that Eden needs to uh, register Eve, it cannot really just call Eve. It needs to wait for Eve to call it, and then it can basically exchange security information that would uh, uh, allow it to recognize that this is indeed the Eve that needs to be trusted and managed. So it needs to wait for an internal Eve timer to elapse, you know, and for Eve to contact you. Uh, while it's doing that, let me actually show you another useful command, which is Eden Eve uh, console. And this is just inside of the Eve itself, right? You know, we are right now inside of a Unix instance, Linux instance, that is Eve itself. So you can run PS and see the processes that are running on the system. It's just a console into a system, right? Uh, but it looks like, you know, the uh, Eve node has been provisioned. And the reason I know this is because it gets the UUID as its host name. So let's exit this uh, and see what Eden thinks of our running Eve instance now. So for that, obviously, let's rerun Eden status uh, command. And right now, everything seems to be green. So Eden knows and understands the remote Eve APIs. So now the only question is, what can you do with this setup? Well, what I tell everyone to do is to run a hello world type of a Docker container, which typically is Nginx. So let's do just that. Eden comes with a pod command, which basically allows you to deploy different types of containers and VMs, uh, and sort of modeled after Docker, so it's pretty easy for people to get their head around. Uh, so let's use Eden uh, pod deploy command and deploy an Nginx, but also proxy its 80 port to 8028 on my local computer. So let's run it. As you can see, Eden is basically creating a configuration for Eve that Eve will later contact controller and ask for. Uh, but if you want to know the status that your container is in, you can run Eden pod ps command, and you will basically see that your container is in configuration. It hasn't really been uh, requested or provisioned by Eve just yet, uh, but the whole system knows about it, so it takes a little bit of time for the container to be requested and provisioned. Uh, but by the time we're done, you will basically have a running Nginx instance. Uh, and just so that we don't waste time waiting for it, uh, I'll cut down to when it's actually running. Now, as you can see, uh, the state of the container change to download started. Uh, this is basically an indication that Eve has uh, started downloading it from Docker registry. Uh, by the way, Eden actually runs a private Docker registry on your laptop, so I could have just, you know, created a custom container and put it in my registry here. Uh, but this one is being downloaded from uh, Docker Hub, uh, so let's wait a little bit for it to finish. Okay, it looks like right now uh, our container is up and running, so everything went correctly. Again, it took a little bit of time, that's why we're doing these, you know, jump cuts. Uh, so the container is up and running, so let's see if I can curl this container. Ta-da! You now have your first container running on Eve. And that concludes our demo. Back to you, Jason. Cool. All right. Thanks, Roman. So, um, yeah, just, we'll kind of wrap it up here. But, you know, obviously, we welcome you guys to, to join in on Eve and, and help contribute. You know, explore, you know, grab, a, grab a Raspberry Pi and, and start hacking. Um, you know, we've actually been growing as a community, so we're up uh, just over 50 unique contributors um, these days. Uh, Zidieta, you know, our company, Roman and crew, uh, contribute, of course. We've had a lot coming in from Xilinx and, and uh, Intel, uh, a variety of others, and so the community is growing, um, and we're seeing EVE being deployed in a variety of different vertical markets, so uh, industrial spaces, um, you know, people interested in, in it and from a healthcare standpoint, if I'm deploying in hospitals and I don't necessarily own the network as a as a solution OEM into a hospital, uh, you know, uh, out in you know, wind turbines out in the middle of nowhere uh, where it requires like a, a helicopter ride to go out there and, and uh, um, touch anything. So having that remote uh, management really helps. Um, so it's just a variety of use cases and, and it's really about bringing together the best uh, uh, solutions into a holistic package and then exposing that open API to where people can just kind of simplify the whole uh, development experience and then you can just go you know, innovate. Uh, so with that, I think um, we'll wrap up. There's a there's some links here. Um, you know, we uh, encourage you to go check out. And
and um, you know, go check out, you know, look at the, the codes out there, of course, you know, lots of documentation online. We run um, you know, weekly office hours if you, if you have any questions or you just want to get involved there. And um, with that, I think we've got time for a few questions if there's questions in the chat. Um, otherwise, that's a wrap for us. And, um, you know, thanks for listening. Yeah, thank you so much.